What's up, everyone? It's Jeremy Majors here with Majors Academy Dog Training, and we are live Facebook, YouTube, and this is uh, a show where we at answer your dog behavior questions, and uh, you can feel free to ask as many questions as you like. Uh, we are live at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, and we'll be probably done no more than... Uh, 7 p.m. Okay, so if you're watching it after that, I won't be able to answer your question live. You just have to jot down the question and then, or write your question, type your question, and then I'll be able to respond to it later. But if you're watching between the time of 6 and 7, I can answer your question right now. So, hope everyone is doing well on this Thursday. And I hope your Friday treats you well. And if you have a drink, cheers. All right, let's go to the first question. Okay, first question is from Jay Marie. Hold on, I gotta get close. I have an almost two-year-old Bernice Aussie mix. She is well socialized and has always done well going places to the vet, school, stores, etc. She's a good canine citizen, a canine good citizen, and her passed her therapy dog test. Out of the blue, a couple of months ago, she freaked out at the vet and went into full flight mode trying to escape, panting and shaking. She's also shown this behavior at school. We think it's the bells though. She's never reacted to them before. At this point, at the vet and at the school, she refuses to get out of the car. Once inside, she is never aggressive and I can get her to follow commands, but cannot get her to chill. We recorded the school bells to work on at home and have attempted to get her to associate them with something positive like her favorite treat, but she goes into flight mode after one attempt. At, th at that point, I can get her to follow basic commands, but she doesn't respond to anyone else and she tries to escape or curls in the corner there was no trauma it's like a switch flipped and i'm not sure how far to push her when working on these fear responses thanks for your help well that's a great question um my question to you would be uh did she recently get spayed i have an almost two-year-old bernie's aussie mix so maybe not Maybe that's a little old for that, um, but maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, as far as getting her to respond to, first of all, with the vet, I always tell people you want to get the dog to, to become very comfortable with uh, being touched, poked, prodded, you know, obviously not with anything sharp, but um, just kind of examined with her body, being able to hold, how you doing Elias? Being able to hold uh, the collar and keeping the dog uh, in the stand or just keeping the dog still. Um, but more importantly, you wanna be able to uh, practice getting your dog comfortable for a vet examination. You know, so touch her everywhere uh anything you think the dog would be able to do sort of like the canine good citizen but a little bit more intimate practice that practice will help with that as far as getting the dog to um to uh not hide in corners when doorbell rings or or when the the school bell rings or something like that um she's just gonna have to become more familiar with it so i don't think what you're doing at home is bad but I'd put her bed in the middle of the room and make make her stay on the bed while you're doing it, all right? And make sure she uh, make sure she has some exercise and whatnot. But keep her on leash so she can't get off the the, the bed. Um, or if she does, you can just bring her back onto the bed. But um, that's what I would do to desensitize that. And that may take a while, but uh, sometimes certain fears come after spaying or neutering. Uh, my female definitely was 
uh, very fearless before she got spayed and afterwards it just something changed and she became a little weird so um, so yeah yes I did pay my heat bill but I like this hat that's why I'm wearing it um, so yeah that's what I would do uh, definitely get her used to being touched again you know, massaging her everywhere for that vet. It's only beneficial for the vet. All right. Thank you for your question. Okay, hold on a second. I got to get the questions here live. While I'm doing that, I can answer another question, though. Okay. Our one-year-old cattle dog uh, I'm boarding has leash aggression and wears a prong. Recently on a pack walk, she started amping up and owner corrected and pulled to the side. The dog kept focused and redirected on the owner, uh, biting and ripping its pa his pants. My question is, usually my correction sideways uh, towards my thigh, but if she's redirecting, do I correct away from me? Um, okay, great question. Thank you, Jackie. I appreciate that. Um, so great question. Dog redirects, and you and basically you want to figure out how to get that dog not to redirect with you, but you still may have to correct the dog when he when she decides to go into um, her uh, her lunging or or adrenalized state. Let's just say that. So one of the things you want to focus on when you're working with a dog that redirects is making sure that you are. Um, Making sure that you are, ha make sure you have the walk separate from any sort of stimuli, or whatever, or the, whatever makes the dog nervous. Make sure that walk is perfect. Okay, and then look for little things to correct at a higher level so that the dog starts to know who you are. Also, start correcting with your voice as well. Um, because the dog, you're going to have to, in, at the end of the, of the day, you're going to have to uh, be able to reach that dog on a deeper level than just what a correction does. A correction is just a superficial way to stop a behavior. But more so than that, what you want to do is to be able to, to establish a certain amount of trust. And when you say something, the dog take your word for it. And in order to do that, you have to make sure you clean up other areas other than the walk. So I wouldn't necessarily... Focus on the dog and the, the um, walking amongst other dogs right now. You may have to make sure the dog can listen to you in a lot of other areas before you, you go back into that area that is very intense. Because at this point, she's not taking your word for it or your correction. At this point, she get, the dog gets overstimulated, decides to redirect on you. That means there's no connection between you and the dog. And so you have to start getting that sort of connection you need to get her to think twice about it in other areas you know make sure the dog downs very well make sure the dog walks very well on leash despite squirrels right so that's what i'm talking about if the dog in any other way walks anything other than perfect when you're not within the environment of of the stimuli or whatever other dogs and whatnot then that's your opportunity to get that walk very perfect and to get that dog very accustomed to you so pretend that the squirrels are like the dogs that she perceives in your uh, in your attempt to correct the dog. So be as you know proactive and diligent and tough on the dog when the dog sees a squirrel, the same way you would be if the dog seen a dog. Obviously, the dog will react different, but the dog will start to um not for one not be able to associate the difference between how tense or how tough you can be amongst the different stimuli because my whole thing is you know if we if we walk perfect uh no matter what there is we don't just walk good when there's a dog or a, a human we walk good all the time and you have to walk this way all the time until you knock off 
uh, until that that goes away when you when you see other dogs. And so, very important because I don't want you getting bit. But like I said, look for other opportunities to get the dog to take your word for it at a higher level, even though it's a lower uh, sort of stimuli for the dog. Right? I hope that makes sense. Okay, I got some questions live. My female dog is, oh, where'd that go? My female dog is very submissive to humans, and me, primarily. But she's super weird and puts her head over your neck. Or she will literally put her head in our large dog's mouth. What's up with that? Uh, okay, so over the neck makes doesn't make much sense as in the mouth. Like when a dog puts, a, puts their head in another dog's mouth, that is a sign of submission. But over the head usually, in my opinion means uh the opposite because uh normally when dogs want to try to be dominant over dogs they try to go over the top and submission submission is below um so the over the neck puts her head over your neck yeah I don't, i'm trying to picture what, what that looks like um but any behavior that is obsessive, you know, I would encourage to uh, block. I would encourage to, you know, redirect. Um, if she's being obsessive about it, she could be obsessive, submissive. There's a lot of dogs that are so insecure, they kind of obsessively do licking and, you know, all that good stuff. But wolves do the same. It's kind of cool to see. But, um, but yeah, that that that's kind of funny. I wonder if you got a, a video. I would like to see a video of it. All right, next question uh, comes from Joe. <clears throat> My boy has come a long way in being friendly and not as fearful of people. But today, he had a setback. We were at the car dealership, and while he was great with everyone there, a man was standing up and had a face and and had faced and away to walk okay i put my boy in a sit and but he got up pulled me over to sniff the guy which startled the guy as the guy then turned around it startled my boy and he got nervous and started to huff and then barked at the guy then he walked back over to the guy and he pet him uh but then my boy turned up and barked at him again i had almost what seemed to nip at him. At that point, my dog started to bark each time another man walked into the waiting area. I heard you shouldn't pull your dog away from the person because it teaches the dog to be fearful of the person. But I don't want him lunging, barking, nipping at people too. I've been told to help build his confidence, but I don't know how to go about doing this when he reacts this way. Man, I'm glad you reached out. Um, so whoever told you, to pull your dog away, stop listening to that person when it comes to advice about your dog. Um, you definitely need to pull your dog away because what your dog needs is space. Your, your dog needs to see you being in control of the situation. This, a situation in which your dog thinks is out of control. So if he's huffing, barking, and all that good stuff. He's trying to manipulate the situation based on his insecurity. And as you, the dog's owner, parent, whatever you want to call it, you have to tell him right from wrong. And so keep him on leash and keep him just hanging out. Don't let people come up to him. Uh, don't, let pe don't let him come up to people. Um, just chill, okay? Um, and let him see for himself with space and distance that people are okay, but also that you have him under control as well. So you have to have him under control and the situation under control, which means not allowing people to pet him, come up and pet him, and not allow him not allowing him to go up to people. Doesn't need that yet. 
maybe in three or four months when he's you can tell that he's clearly comfortable no huffing ever you know no nervousness no not a lot of movement just a just a a lot of calm energy a lot of indifference so uh, that's what you want to look forward when look for when you want to take the next step but um, if the dog is is energetic at all, hyper at all, nervous at all, you never want to move forward in that mindset. Okay, so keep your distance for now. That's what you do to help a dog learn that people are okay. Showing him that you can actually control him and the situation can actually be controlled. That's when safety and trust uh, start start to build between you and the dog. All right, thanks for your question. That's a That's a good... That's a good question. Feel free to ask another one too. You guys aren't limited to just one question. Okay. All right. Hey, Jeremy, question for you regarding my, uh, she recently been very aggressive toward our other dog. It's jealousy related. She's jealous of everything. One of us petting the other dog or over a resource slash food. Uh, she just, she doesn't just snap or growl. She full on Cujo. She draws blood. You know she's typically fearful of things, so this behavior is troubling. All right, so what I would can, I would do is make sure that you refrain from petting Maya for a while um, and have her e-collar on. And then when you pet that one dog, um, you put her in place and she is to watch the other dog being pet. You always want to make sure, make sure that that's a rule of yours. You can be able to pet one dog at a time if you have two dogs that are jealous. But if she's deciding to do that, again, here's the other thing. Your dogs should not think it's okay to fight in the home. That's like having children fight in the home. We obviously wanna teach our kids that that's not cool. Same thing with dogs. They can learn that that behavior is not acceptable, but you may have to correct the dog um, at a high level. So don't be afraid to put that collar up. I mean, put the collar on the dog and turn it up high and if she if it even growls you know I would give her a tough correction so that you guys don't break up dog fights and end up getting hurt okay so um, nip it in the bud don't worry about going low level and all that stuff if you want to get it done go higher than normal I mean way higher than normal don't be afraid to go high and teach Maya that that behavior is not acceptable whatsoever Okay, put her in her place while you pet the dog. I do that all the time with my dog. They don't even come up to me anymore. If I'm petting one dog, the other dog's like, eh, he's just gonna shoo me away. You know? So, if you have any more ha trouble with that, please call me. Let's work this out. You know what I mean? Let me know. We can do it. I really wanna make sure she acts okay because I know she can. Thanks for your question. Thank you, Carol. I appreciate that. Okay, my girl, Lab Mix, almost two, has resource guarding issues, I think. But she seems to tease the other dog to get them to engage her. Let me ask you this. Oh, sorry, I sent it soon. She absolutely loves other dogs, but it seriously looks like she's walking. I gotta plug my phone in because it's got low battery. Hold on a second. Whoa. Okay. Uh, but it seriously looks like she's walking around enticing them to pay attention to her. I've picked up everything and kept stuff up, but and kept stuff put up when fosters are here now, but I would like to fix the issue. So what you're gonna to have to do is have a, an aversive uh, tool when she decides to get into whatever behavior that you deem uh, unnecessary or wrong, okay? Um, and you're gonna to have to teach her exactly uh, when it happens that it's not worth it to do. And so um, there are many tools that you can use in order to get that, but you're gonna to have to be around when it happens so that you can guide her and correct that behavior so she doesn't do it. Um, be careful doing it with dogs that you she doesn't know. I would start with dogs that she's familiar with. 
and um, I would, if you're having fosters coming in uh, out of the home, home I'd kind of stay away from that anyway. Uh, because when you're bringing on, bringing in fosters, there's always new relationships that have to be built between your dogs and the fosters. And sometimes that can cause some tension. So until your dogs get used to the current fosters and it take a month, a month or so, um, before you start introducing those other things, you know what I mean? Um, because it's, it's one or two things as to why the dog does it. Uh, rather they, so one is they could not have a good relationship or two, the dog just, uh, thinks it's okay to do it. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, um, in order to fix that, like I said, you'll just have to be there and use a tool to help the dog take your word for it, um, or teach the dog that that behavior is not okay. All right. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, explain, further explain, or ask another question so I can help you out. All right. Amy says, hey, Jeremy, did you ever get to Bark and Brew? If so, seeing how busy it can be, how do you monitor, how, how do you monitor your dogs there? If a bit of snarky dogs gets to be too much, do you simply push the dogs away or walk between? Or how do you handle that when it's just your dog had a couple of dogs there that seemed to want to target my rottweiler when there he ignored them so far but we will all, we all have limits and i don't want him to get to his so far i've been trying to move away with my body and calling him away other ideas yeah that's uh that's pretty much what i would do um i would i have definitely in a dog park situation grabbed other dogs you know shoot them away you know i i'm not too shy about you know, confronting other dogs in the dog park and if their owners have a problem, educating them because you know, you, you know, I know you and you have much more dog experience than the average dog owner. So, you know, I kind of just make sure my dog is safe. Walking away is really good, um, calling the dog away. But if a dog gets obnoxious, I'll, I'll, I'll grab the dog and, you know, shoo the dog away as best I can you know it's tough um so and it's a frustrating situation which is why I don't go at all but um in the past if I've been at the dog daycare or if I was at a dog park or somewhere where there's a lot of strange dogs and strange people um yeah I would correct the dog right there I would touch him you know I'd yeah I'm not ashamed or shy to do that because I want to keep my dog safe. You're welcome, Michelle. That's I'm glad it makes sense. Sometimes I read people's questions completely wrong. All right, if you're just joining us on YouTube, feel free to ask a question. This is dog behavior Q&A. So if you have any questions about your dog's behavior and or training, please feel free to uh, type in your question. All right. Let's see. Okay, I have a seven-year-old female uh, spade that goes psycho over nothing. She will come in from outside and just go crazy, growling and barking, jumps on my other dog, my daughter, or myself. She's never bit or broke skin, uh, but leaves scratch marks all over us and, at times, teeth marks. I've tried so many things to redirect her, but the only thing that calms her down is being put in a crate for a while. I do have a video of her, uh, the way she barks and growls at us, but she gets a lot worse than the videos. Yeah, go ahead and send me those videos. I'd love to see them. Um, that's kind of weird, but I can see it making sense that um, when they come in, when dogs go in and out of thresholds, they certainly can it certainly can cause a certain level of adrenaline or excitement that causes them to try and control situations some dogs that's how dogs handle situations sometimes when they get to a certain level of adrenaline they tend to want to control and so that's my guess my best guess is i think that that's what your dog is doing trying to control you guys in that situation and um 
And so what you can start doing, there's a couple of ways you can start doing that, but making sure the dog respects that when you open the door, the dog has to wait before coming in and out of the door. You know, making sure the dog actually respects you. And then that'll bring that, if the dog is very energetic, it'll bring that energy down before the dog comes into the house. Um, you can also go outside, try and leash the dog up, and then bring the dog in on leash. And I would just take it right to its crate or just hang out on leash until the dog is calm and then let the dog off leash. Um, I would start with those. All right, and make sure you send me that video. Try those, what I suggested. There's many other ways that you can get that done, but um, try those try those kind of uh, the, the, those suggestions and then if that doesn't work you know and send me those videos we can try something else but the dog just has to be in my opinion calm down uh, in the midst of those thresholds okay hope that makes sense thanks for your question okay next question is for renee how do i get my dog to stay in place to stand do stand there on leash until he stays and walk away. Uh, and if he comes back, do the same thing till he stays. Uh, once you have gotten that established, what do you call that when you ask him to go their place? And uh, when they're very sassy, send them to their place when there is no respect. Um, and the kennel is a safe area for a dog that being set being said is place when sassy or i know that is a calm area as well not getting the respect down all right so first of all uh yep yeah, if your dog is young like i know your dog is um stay with the dog at, on the bed until the dog is indifferent then you can maybe go away right but the dog has to become indifferent not paying attention to you and not uh, being attentive to its surroundings before you can walk away from the bed. Okay, so um, with the leash on, walk the dog to the bed. You can say place, you can say on your bed, say go to your bed. I usually just say go to your bed. Um, and then uh, have your dog sit or down uh, and then just stay there until the dog, like I said, settles completely down. Um, and then you can maybe take another, take a few steps away or go sit on the couch. Um, and repeat that if the dog decides to get up you have to put him down but give him a correction uh, if he decides to get repeatedly get up from that place all right one more uh, jumping on people and counter too and he does not get any people food standing on leash is isn't stopping it the air can is a joke to him run away play for him and holding his paws tight to me Walking backwards doesn't work, and using my knee do, it isn't working. And yeah, he doesn't respect me. Yep, seems like he doesn't respect you at all. Uh, that's something that you guys are going to have to work on. I've shown you many techniques on how to get that done. Okay, um, there's something going on between you two. I can't figure it out. Uh, there's something going on between you two, because clearly he has the ability to do it. Um, either you're feeding him to him way too much, because he's manipulating you. All right, so he must be doing something and you must be answering him because he's running the show, right? Whether it's him whining, whether it's him being demanding, barking or whatever, he does not respect what you say. So you're not being consistent with what um, I have told you or with what you are telling the dog because there's a big disconnect. The dog shouldn't be doing all this stuff despite what we've already worked on. Okay, so, and that, again, is something that I can't fix. I think you're get, it's pretty clear that you're giving in to the dog somewhere around the, some, in some area, because no dog is going to just act crazy continually if you're doing certain things consist, consistently. Or if he is, then he's crazy, and you should put him down, because that, that dog doesn't seem to be healthy. But, um... I know that that's not the case. So there's something missing because we shouldn't be going over the same issues over and over and over and over again. So 
Um, one of the things that I would do going forward is evaluating how much time you're spending with him. You, you could be too, spending too much time with the dog because he's also taking advantage of the time, all of that time to, to make you become more inconsistent with him. So spend less time. You already spend a lot of time, I already know that. So put him in this crate after you spend a good amount of time and leave him there. And don't answer him. Start with that. You know, because I, I, I just don't have any more answers. There's no way that I can continue to tell you how to get respect and it doesn't happen. The dog's taking advantage of you. It's clear. All right, next question. Okay. All right. This question comes from Lisa. My dog is an eight-year-old pit that had MC cancer removed two years ago. Uh, now, he just had a few tumors up, up here, and I feel like I don't want to stress the dog out, but the dog is dog reactive on walks, and the behavior is awful. Can I make the behavior better or just accept that he's a jerk on walks with, if we meet other dogs. Uh, that's pretty tough. You know, I would have to, I would have to physically see the dog in order to evaluate if the dog had the ability to actually learn without causing more health issues to the dog. You know what I mean? Physically. Um, we, what we don't want to do is push the dog to a point where, uh, you know, the dog's health deteriorates because of the training and because of the pushing that we'd be doing. Um, so I'd have to see the dog. If the dog seems like it can go on a nice walk, um, then I would start, I could start doing that, but make the, you know, really keep, keep your distance between you and dogs, like just extend it so that the dog doesn't get into that high adrenalized state. Um, and so the dog that, you know, can't, uh, continue to or, or or doesn't have the potential to hurt itself even more but make sure the dog is you know able maybe rest the dog up a little bit before you take the dog out like that um, I always have to evaluate how much you know I, I usually don't even take dogs if they're not you know completely healthy every now and then I'll have to squeeze in a situation where uh, you know the dog still has to learn despite um, being not 100% healthy. Um, so it's going to be tough. The dog is a little older, uh, as far as healing time goes and, um, and, uh, getting the dog to, to, uh, get used to other dogs on leash, but make sure you're walking right anyway. Make sure that walk is right. That's the first thing first anyway, is making sure you have a loose leash heel uh, with the dog in general and then lay down and then um, maybe try some other dogs after the health is cleared and whatnot but make sure the walk is right all right and if you you're not sure what I'm talking about as far as the technique goes on the walk visit my YouTube channel um, it's majors Academy dog training it has a how to walk video on there and uh, so to make sure that your that walk is right but that's the first thing. If you want to get a dog that's going to be okay on leash with other things, humans, dogs, whatever it is, dog has to be okay with you on leash first. Uh, and um, adding structure to that can make that happen. All right. Thank you for your question. All right, folks. Yeah, those of you who are watching, feel free to ask more than one question. Um, I did have a topic of the day that I wanted to uh, go over. And I forgot to type into the to the question thing or to the title, but it is uh, hold on. I'm gonna have to try and remember it. It was an, a recurring thing that theme that I had going on 
uh, with a couple of dogs um, that I had recently trained. Oh, here's the deal. Got it. Okay, hold on. Let me take a sip. Cheers, guys, by the way. Okay, so check this out. When you are with your dog, and this, this is for everyone, doesn't matter. But when you are with your dog, and you're spending time with your dog, make sure you are spending some time just chilling, just relaxing. Because I, I um, have experienced a couple of dog uh, owners lately that um, their dogs aren't uh, able to uh, to sort of be independent of the owner's attention. And the only way to combat that is to just chill in certain areas where the dog then becomes indifferent to your attention. So especially when you come when it comes to being outside, when you spend time with your dog, don't let it just be a reactive experience, which means let's just play ball back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, that, although is exercise physically, that's not going to get you anywhere uh, mentally. So, so what we like to build in dogs when they come here is making sure that they're comfortable uh, being independent of the owner as well. Don't allow your dog's pushy behavior to play, to be pet, to be, to go outside, to do any of that stuff. Don't let that necessarily get you get the dog what it wants. Okay, because you're just gonna build a dog who is a reactive dog. Um, and, you know, like I said, if you have a dog that is reactive to uh, multiple different things that are outside, then you have to spend time with the dog outside uh, doing nothing and correcting bad behavior long enough to where the dog can become calm in that environment without you. That's the goal. The, um, the first step would obviously to be calm with you, but you should be able to put your dog outside and them not whine for your attention. That's what I'm trying to say. You should be able to put your dog outside and they can go relax and get some sun, you know, and not bark at the neighbors and not bark at the other dogs and all that. But in order in order to get there, you may have to use you may have to use that outside time with your dog in a constructive way, meaning giving the uh, you know like I said, staying outside with the dog, but also. Um, taking you know taking the dog for a walk around the perimeter but maybe putting the dog in a down uh, with duration um, so that the dog can experience everything under your control that's the deal the deal is can you put your dog in a down and cars go by children go by dogs go by whatever else you see out there all those things that may get him excited can your dog stay in that down and not be tense and don't move up forward until the dog actually kind of relaxes. You know, that's that's the point where the dog is starting to learn that calm behavior is achievable in certain areas. So that was kind of the re reoccurring theme. I want again, I want want to be able to put my dogs outside and not have to be out there eventually. That's the goal, but before that, you'll have to be out there and just chill. Not, you know, I know people are busy and all that good stuff, but don't be afraid to stay outside, go outside with your dog and not play fetch. You know what I mean? Uh, just relax with the dog. Let the dog smell the smells. Enjoy the air, the air and the sun and all that cool stuff. So that's what I have to say about that. All right, we got a question. Uh, my pup is a boxer mix. He is a rescue and about four months old. 
He follows me everywhere when I go to the bed, room, or bathroom. I shut the door and he scratches on it. How should I handle this at this age? Um, you can correct him for that. You know, um, you can correct him for that. He's just being way too clingy. Remember this though. Um, the dog gets if the dog if that scratching, barking, or whatever it is gets him what he wants in any other area. That's what he's gonna do. We want to start building a dog that assumes the calm behavior can get the dog what it wants. So you wanna you wanna um, even in the crate. You never want to let that dog out while the dog is uh, loud, um, scratchy, or hyper. If you can get calmness before the dog comes out, then you can start building on that. You know, there's a lot of good behavior, not just learning how to not pee in the poop in the house that the crate can achieve. The crate can be a great training tool besides just learn uh, teaching the dog to pee and poop. It can help in a, in a safe way, help the dog get used to neighbors or strangers, um, get used to other dogs. Uh, because the dog can't actually physically get to the dog. But kids, um, so the crate can be used for many different things. Um, but the, the one of the more important things is teaching the dog how to get what it wants. Obviously, it wants your attention. It wants to come out of the crate. And so teach the dog that in order to get that, that you'll have to start being calm to get it. And that'll also teach the dog to use its brain, become more independent of you, and um, the dog won't be so needy. Because if you can continue on this path, um, you know the dog will start to act out in other areas. Um, so you can correct the dog. You know, open the door, say no. You know, uh, or get a squirt bottle or something that you know will help the dog see that it can't do that. And then close the door right away. That's what I would do. Um, you know, something like that. But the dog's, that dog's behavior does have to be corrected with a no. Uh, and the dog has to stop it, you know, before you stop correcting it, right? So if the dog goes back into scratching, then you have to do it again. All right, so just correct the behavior that you don't like and see how it works for you. Okay, thank you for your question. Feel free to ask another one. All right, a German Shepherd is almost two years old and we've had him almost a year, okay? Uh, he's very reactive and we've been trying to get him to be more calm. We make him wait before he does anything and it works. But as soon as we say release, he gets all crazy again and I'm wondering if we will ever settle down. It's kind of what you just talked about. Okay. Um, he's very reactive. What is he reactive to? If you can, uh, type that in, please. What is he reactive to? Um, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask or answer another question while you're typing that. Okay, I am working with a client with a fearful slash nervous two-year-old and he's making great progress with the prong and E collar and very dedicated owners. His existing, he is existing around people and dogs without reacting. She took him into the vet two times and he goes into red zone when he, when, when the vet tech starts to, starts with the high-pitched voices. <laughs> And baby talk. How can I help her through this? <laughs> I went with her once, told the vets to be calm and not rush him, and they listened 10%. He was muzzled and did okay, but as soon as the girl reached to give him the vaccine, he started to flip out. He did, main he did remain on the table and ended it with a massage, and I ended it with a massage and didn't let him bolt off. Uh, but very tech was but the vet tech was fumbling nervous and loud and didn't give any vaccines any tips oh yeah it kind of makes my blood boil uh you're gonna have to try and see if you can get with the vet that actually listens to you 
You know, that high-pitched baby voice, if it actually worked, it wouldn't get a reaction out of the dog in a negative way. So it doesn't work. Because too many people with high-pitched baby voices have probably invaded his space to where it has made this dog fearful. Um, so, yeah, like I said, best bet you can do is try and see if you can get with some vet that will actually listen. Um, but one of the things, so I, I just tell dog, I just tell vets not to talk to them. Don't talk to them. Just come in, do your thing and, and, uh, and let's go. Um, but one of the other things that I do to prepare my dogs for vets and I've had success with it is holding the dog, not putting the dog on a table, but holding the dog on the ground, holding the, the, the head to a certain position to where the butt is kind of forced to stay down. So kind of at that level, the nose is here. Keep the head up like this. Okay. Um, if you do that to any dog, just lift up beyond this collar, take your hands like this. So the dog's head's this way. You take the hands underneath the collar, put that head up like this, and hold the dog there. The dog's butt will hit the ground, okay? Um, and obviously the dog has to trust you in this situation. It makes for an easier situation. But I, that's what I do the entire time the, the dog is getting anything done at the vet. Um, uh, and I've had great success with it. But... Um, you can start kind of practicing that uh, in preparation for it. But bottom line, dog has to trust you. Dog has to be able to be a certain level of obedience with you. And um, the dog shouldn't be facing the vet at all whatsoever. The dog should be facing you. And everything's sort of under your on your terms and under your control. All right, so I'll talk through it with the dog. Um, I've even went as far as lifting the back legs slightly off the ground so the dog can't turn around. And then I would just talk to the dog. I would say no anytime the dog would start to look like this. And then when he when came down, calmed down, I would gently say, good boy. And then if they got nervous and tense again, I would say no. You know, um, and then uh, my last dog that was super super crazy was this uh american eskimo named buddy and we did exactly what i just described i held one collar or the leash on a very short leash next to his collar then i held the other leash to kind of lift up the back legs so the dog couldn't turn around it's a smaller dog but um and i just talked th the dog through it saying no when he got tense and saying good when um, he gave me what I wanted, which was relaxation, and they were able to, uh, what did they get done? They did some difficult shit. Oh, they were able to draw blood and give shots and all that good stuff. So, um, vet was all, was very, very impressed because the, pr the time prior to that dog went nuts and the parents were also very impressed. So, um, try those things, you know, I definitely, like I said, tell the vet, don't do any of that crate, that dumb stuff. Don't even, you know, so that just, yeah, that irritates me. So I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Okay. I was Kathy's dog's foster. My boxers follow me in whatever room I'm in, and those are always wanted to be in with them. So in turn, he was always in the room when I was. My dogs do not scratch at the door and either would do dozer, but they would lay calmly in the room I was I was in. Sorry, Kathy, hope you can correct that. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, uh, I sort of gear to point people in the, in, in the direction that your dog shouldn't really be following you everywhere, uh, especially if you have insecure dogs um, that are reactive to their environment. You kind of want to let them, you know, they don't have to do that. It's, it's endearing, whatever, but, um, you're almost feeding into their, their holding them back from being, uh, uh, autonomous from you. And I, and I think, 
a certain level of autonomy is healthy within any relationship. So, so there you go. When we're going, when we're going to take outside, he goes nuts, and I don't even have to say anything. Uh, just put my coat on. Also, my my any outside noises. And when we're outside, everything. He also gets wild when I try to brush him or wipe his paws. We we're, we're we're working hard with him, but it seems to be taking forever. Um. So Jennifer, you know what you have to do. Obviously, maybe you, maybe you're doing this, but you have to you have to get the dog to not have the ability to run from you. Okay. Uh. When you're doing the brush and you're wiping his paws, um. And so. You want to just practice grabbing him by the collar and doing those things. And when he, the moment, the moment he starts to get squirmy, you tell him to stay. But you can also fix all those things if you even can't even do that. You can also fix all those things on leash, getting him to stay while you while you're walking him. All right. So be under the mindset that the dog is uh following you you're not following the dog and you say stay for as long as you want until the dog until um you're ready to move forward so when i teach in the walk i get the the owner and the dog to sit and i want to watch how many times the dog will actually try to move the owner and you want to fix that right there don't allow your dog to dictate where you go when you stop how many times you stop um and all that good stuff if your dog has a problem with stay, then I would definitely definitely add a lot more structure to the walk um, and the place command. And I would even do the place command before when you uh, when you are uh, getting your jacket on and getting the leash on. You have to you should put be able to put him in place, get your jacket on, get yourself prepared, get his collar, walk over to him, put the collar on, then get ready to go. Then sit him at the door open the door and just sit there until the dog actually gives you eye contact without you asking it don't ask for it wait for it okay and that may take some time but um those kind of moments are going to create the dog saying what are we doing as opposed to i'm doing this or this means this a reactive dog's mindset is is this means this, 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 this means this. That's sort of a one track mind and it's a kind of a dumb thought process. We want to get our dogs to engage more with us, look us in the eye more, give us more eye contact. And for that, we have to make them do things in the midst of that this means this situation. So the dog can start to think. And so I would put the dog in place and I would go get my jacket. I would even do this. If you can't do that without the uh, leash, leash him up, put him in place, go get the get, get yourself ready, jacket and all that. And if the dog can hold its place for a minute, literally a minute, uh, then you can go get the dog and then um, go outside and try that. But try switching things up like that. To, uh, to get the dog to to um, to uh, start thinking, start using his head and, and not react as much. All right. Hope that makes sense and I hope that helps. Let me know if it doesn't. All right. Thank you. I will try the positioning uh, with the double leashes. He does trust me and the owner. Uh, we can do this. Uh, I will be rougher on the vet tech for sure. That baby talk kills me. Oh, good Lord. Kills me, kills me, kills me, kills me, kills me. All right. Um, thanks for your question. Okay. My Charlie boy seems to be inconsistently anxious. Are the triggers I may not be aware of uh, that could be triggering his stress? Um, why don't you tell me what the dog gets stressed over? And I can tell you, unless the dog just gets anxious. Uh... Like you said, for no reason. But there's always a reason. We just gotta figure it out. Yeah, gotta figure it out. So let me know what you think. When does it happen? There's gotta be a pattern. All right. Okay, 
I am doing that and at the door, but I will try using the place command and switching it up. You can also do this. You can also bring the dog outside and then bring the dog right back inside and then wait again at the door. And then let the dog react to his environment again and bring him right back inside. Um, you know, something to just really combat that reactive mindset, you know, getting the dog to, 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 uh, to really pay attention to you because you also have to take control in that environment. Thresholds are, are difficult because it's the unknown. So that's why a lot of dogs want to naturally rush out of the door. It's the unknown that they're trying to become known. That's trying, they're trying to, you know, they may run out the door and see a squirrel, bird, stranger, something like that, that could make them either really nervous or really excited. And so their need to get out is, is, is very, very uh, tough to deal with, you know, and, um, but, uh, you know, door control and threshold control is something that I, you know, really can I really stress. So, um, try those things and see, see where you get. All right. Thanks for your question. Okay. You guys should get your last questions in if you have any. Otherwise, what I'm going to start doing is picking a dog trainer or somebody who is within our industry or, you know, and I'm going to start, um, I think I told you this last time, but I'm going to start interviewing people so that we can get a different, start getting a, my community can start getting a different perspective from different people all around the freaking world. I've already got a couple people in mind, but um, make sure you tune in next time uh, so that we can actually, uh, we can actually uh, have that you know, it'll be me and some other expert talking about dogs and dog behavior or whatever it is. Uh, so stay tuned. It's going to be great. Thank you guys for all your questions. Um, give me a thumbs up, please, if you liked it. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. We'll be here same time next week answering all your questions. All right. Cheers. Happy Thursday. And uh, we'll see you next time.